was the story of the, uh, <clears throat> at the end of the potato famine in uh, 1847 specifically. Um, and there were many years where there were a lot of Irish immigrants who were coming to Canada. But that particular year, the typhus, they were weakened by uh, the potato famine. You know, two or three years had been going on. And uh, a lot of um, disease started to spread in the ships. So when they, they arrived in Canada, the typhus had spread in mul many of the ships. And so they got to the quarantine station, which is Grosil, down river of Quebec City. And at the quarantine station, uh, they were overwhelmed because in a normal year, maybe a hundred people would die at the quarantine station. And that year, they buried 5,000 on the island in one summer. So it was, uh, the city was overwhelmed, uh, the doctors, the priests, everyone that was running the island really uh, were overwhelmed by the disease and the suffering that was going on. I'm guessing that some of the, well, long uh, ancestors of the people involved, the survivors, might in fact be around to uh, take in this show. Yeah, and if, if when you visit Gozil, it's pretty impressive to see the burial ground uh, where, where there were hundreds and hundreds of people who they didn't even have the names, you know, they were, they were in unmarked graves, a lot of them. And um, uh, when you go there, there's a, as a museum now, there's a big glass wall with the names of all of the people that they know. And, and it's pretty impressive when you see 1847 and you see the you know, three, four, five thousand names on this glass wall overlooking the graveyard. And it, you can't not be moved when you go visit the place. And then uh, you turn the corner and go up the hill and there's a big Celtic cross that was erected about 60 years after the events to commemorate that. So our story starts in 1909 where there's a couple going back to the island. Uh, who had been children on the island and one of them actually was in a, uh, one of the orphans and so we tell the story through their eyes.